What's going on guys? I just wanted to share a big thank you to everybody who got me to 500 subscribers. Um, let's go to a thousand. So uh, it's only been about a year and I've got to 500 and I would like to keep that going to a thousand. Let's get it going. I just want to thank everybody. Hashtag DSKFS. Do something kind for someone and let them know that they are appreciated and loved. Um, what you're about to see is just my way of doing things. I am no expert and I wanted to make sure everybody understood that I'm not an expert in any of the things you're about to see. It's just my processes. Please be safe with dealing with these chemicals that I'm about to share with you as some real dangerous things can happen. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Aries EDC. And today we're going to talk about the next steps on these two blades that are on the table. I have the naked column and the yoke dough. Both of them are nicely cleaned up and they're ready for the next step of the process. And the next step of the process for these two, which are skeletonized blades, which means they're not getting handle scales or anything put on them, they're basically going to look like this. But these two are going to be acid etched and stonewashed. So I want to kind of walk you through the process of what I do to prepare them for the acid etching, what I use for acid etching, and the process after it's etched. Because it's not just a simple, you pull it out of the etch and that's what it's gonna look like. Unfortunately, sometimes you pull it out of the etch, it's nice and dark, but then it, that finish rubs off real quick. So you kinda have to do a multi-step process to do it. So the first thing is you gotta clean everything up. Um, I have sanded them down again, um, 400 grit sandpaper on the flats, which gives me a nice satin finish on the blade. Um, and up to 320 on the flat, I like there to be a little bit of contrast between the flat of the blade and the bevel. So you can kind of see that nice line, nice crisp line as we say in the, as makers say. So I have that, um, so this, one is turning out really good. Same with the column. Uh, but we need to clean these guys up. And I just use acetone to kind of get all the oils, everything off the blade. Because if you leave oils or anything on the blade, when you go to etch it, it's going to be swirly. It's going to leave marks that don't get etched really well. So it's really important to clean these off. And I have like this little squirt bottle full of acetone, which is excellent. I can just squeeze it and it just squirts the acetone straight onto the blade. Um, I just use paper towel um, and try to just clean everything off. Notice I'm wearing gloves because the oils of your hands can affect the etch as well. So I'm gonna try to get everything clean as possible. Um, I like the the, I guess, I, I don't know what to say it, just the raw material look of that. So I'm not worried about any of that, especially after heat treat, it kind of gets the um, the forge scale gets all up in the, that, and it kind of gives it a unique look. And I like the contrast between the nice clean satin blade and then that as well. But this person wants it to be acid etched. So I got to make sure I'm cleaning this really, really good, trying to get all the oils off that may have come into the process when making it. So same thing here, uh, gonna clean it really well. Um, I should probably do the other side too, huh? So we'll just make sure I get plenty of acetone on there, get everything cleaned as good as possible. Uh, and then we're gonna get into the etch. So what I use for my etching solution is a mixture of ferric chloride and white vinegar. Uh, so it's about 50-50 eh, mix of ferric chloride and white vinegar. Um, there's tons of different methods of doing it. Um, and there's actually, you know, one day I might purchase this, but um, Baker Forge and Tool, which if you haven't checked them out on Instagram, they're, they, they do some mind blowing Damascus. They make their own Damascus. And they make a product called Gator Piss, <laughs> which is their own custom etching solution. Uh, since they make Damascus and they like make Kumai 
and different other Damascuses with copper and other kind of steels in it that give it a really crazy look. Um, but they use, they've created their own method and one day I'll purchase that. But right now I'm using the ferrochloride and vinegar. It seems to be working right now. And so here we are, we are cleaned up. I got them prepared for etching. So I'm gonna tilt you guys up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I have these two bottles. Um, this is obviously the ferrochloride. Um, and it, like I said, it's a mixture of ferrochloride and white vinegar. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to use some of this just electrical cable that I have. You don't want anything metal um, because obviously if you put something metal, it could, it could affect the etching. So I just wrap that in there and I'm just going to drop this in. And I think usually I do this once or twice, the process in whole. Um, but I'll, I'll go through it with you guys. And then I have a solution of um, baking soda and water. And that is that neutralizes the acid. So once I take it out of here, then I put it in here. It neutralizes the acid. So it starts, stops the rust process or the corrosion process because you're basically you're corroding the surface area of the steel so i put it in there it neutralizes it let it soak in there for like a minute or so then i take it out i use compressed air and i get all of it dry then i'll take some wd-40 wd-40 <laughs> and i'll spray it on the blade and let it sit for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour just with the oil on it. And that's just there to protect it. And it kind of, it lets the acid etch really soak into the blade. So let me figure out how I'm going to film this because this is not a really great angle. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another loop on this one. And then we're going to dip it into the ferrochloride. So let me figure that out. All right, guys, so here we are. I got the ferrochloride open. Uh, it's just a nice dark solution. Nothing really amazing about that. And basically all I'm gonna do is take the blade and I'm gonna drop it down in there. Um, I already see, now see, whoa, uh, see that? I need to wipe that off. That could have been something that would not allow the acid etch to take on that part of the blade. So I'm just going to take the blade um, and I'm going to just drop it into the etch. And for the first etch, I like to sit in there for about 20 minutes. Um, but you can see if I take it out already, it's starting to get dark. Uh, so yeah, it happens really fast, but I'll let it sit in there for about 20 minutes. Um, and let's go ahead and do the Yocto as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that in there and we'll let them soak for about 20 minutes or so. And then we'll come back and I'll share what those look like with you. Um, I'll try to get some better lighting too. I think we'll, I'll figure it out. All right, guys, I'm at the sink. I know it's not easy to look at, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull them out. I'm going to just wash it real fast and then I'm going to put it in the solution and then I'm gonna to have to take you guys out and do the other part of it and then hang them up um, so I already know that I'm not 100% liking the way that they're coming out so they're probably gonna to have to repeat this process a couple times which is perfectly fine that's part of the deal uh, you can only do so much at one time so let's take the yolk dough out first so there's that. Let's wash it. Just get some clean hot water on. Nice and light water. And I'm going into that and just let that soak in there. You'll see it bubbles a little bit because it's neutralizing any of the acids that might still be on that blade. And do the same thing with the column. You can see it has some interesting things going on on it. I don't know what's going on, but it nice and dark. Um, why do I not 
use a paper towel to wash it off. Well, if I use a paper towel to wash it off, what I'm doing is actually wiping, sorry, wiping the etch off the blade. Um, and I don't want to wipe the etch off the blade. Um, so let's put that in the neutralizing solution. Wait about a couple minutes and then we'll go do the other part. And I'll set this camera up over there so you can kind of see what I'm going to do. All right, guys, so here we are. I spared you the compressor. Um, <laughs> it gets loud. So what I just did was took my compressor, took compressed air, and blew, tried to dry off the blades. So you don't want to take a paper towel and wipe it because what you're doing is you're wiping the etch off. Um, and you can see already there's, not some, there's a lot of non-uniformity to that etch, which means either I didn't clean it really well or something else is going on. Um, but... Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray them down with WD-40 and I'm just going to let them sit and dry for a good another 30 minutes to 45 minutes to just help protect uh, the blade. It kind of coats it and lets that etch still set in because that etch is still setting in like right here. Obviously, there was still some residual oils. I didn't clean it off well. Um, the acid etch will hide some of that kind of stuff, but it's just interesting to see some of those things or i didn't dry it off really well but it's kind of you never know when you're doing this what it's going to come out so we never know so i'm going to spray these down and we'll come back when they're ready all right so they've been hanging up oiled for quite some time so i've took them down you can see they still are covered in the oil um so what I want to do is I'm going to take some 1,000 grit sandpaper and just see what we have. Um, like I said, this is a repeatable process. So if I don't like the way that this is coming out, then I will be able to repeat this whole thing and keep going until I get the sheen that I want. So um, I'm just going to basically take this 1,000 grit and slowly start to do it. Now, I heat treated and quenched to this one myself and because i do it in the um oh my god brain i need to get another cup of coffee um because i do it in the forge i'm really only heat treating and tempering the blade so the handle usually gets a different color and doesn't usually get as dark because i'm not really getting the handle up to temperature when I heat treat. I'm more just trying to get the blade up to temperature. Um, so that's why a lot of my acid etching, um, if I'm doing it myself, the actual blade usually gets darker in the acid etch than my handle. Um, so that's just a little tidbit for you guys. Um, trying to get everything nice off. Um, it's still looking pretty dark, which is good. Um, but I know once I wipe this, <laughs> things are going to change. Let's get the handle really well. Get everything off of that. Uh, 1,000 grit's really not doing a lot. I'm just trying to, like, treat the surface, really, is all I'm really doing. All right, so... Let's get that off. A nice light brushing with a paper towel. Because at this point, the etch is set with the oils and everything else. So let's give it a good wipe down. I didn't really get in there really well, huh? So, so you know, it's just a process. You know, you got to clean it up. And I can already tell that there's some spots that didn't get the acid etch when i stone wash it it's gonna hide any of the imperfections which is why a lot of people stone acid etch and stone wash because to get a perfect uniform acid etch is very difficult to do um a lot of makers do the stone wash afterwards because just with the heat treating and everything else everything would have to be absolutely dead nuts perfect for all of that stuff to work um, there is a guy 
that created a blade um, and he, he did this acid etch and it was absolutely perfect. I have no idea how he was able to do that. All right, not bad. What do you guys think? So, well, let me wipe that end off too. All right, so that's not terrible. There's some streak marks on there, which I'm not really sure why there's streak marks on there, but yeah, they're coming off. But you guys get the idea. Um, so I'm gonna continue to work on that one. Let's do the Yokdo while I have you guys. Um, see what that one looks like. Again, 1000 grit. Um, this one was heat treated at Peter's and they use obviously probably heat treating ovens and everything else. So they'll, they usually can get the whole blade up to temperature and maybe one day I'll get a heat treating oven. But right now I don't have $1,700 to drop on one. <laughs> so I'm keeping it low key. Um, keeping it, you know, easy for me to manage. Um, if I did get a kiln, then I would be able to maybe look at coming up with the processes to heat treat stainless, um, and being able to do everything in house. But as of right now, I'm happy with being able to send it out, do Peter's and, uh, call it a day. Uh, I don't want it to become too much of a process and quite honestly I don't have space um, I barely have the space to do the things that I am doing so to be able to do that with um, more equipment I don't even know where I'd put it it's like a 2x72 as much as I would love to get a 2x72 grinder I really don't know where I'd put that guys I really don't so um, all right, let's give this a good wipe down. Let's do it with this one. What do you guys think? That doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Once I stonewash it, I kind of like the way that darkness came out. So Yopto was good. Uh, the column, I think I'm going to do one more acid etch on that one. Try to get some of the you know, the uniformities off or non-uniformities off. But yeah, that's not terrible, huh? All right, very good. I'm happy with the way the Yocto is. Um, and I'll work on the column. Cool. All right, guys. So I went ahead and repeated the process with the column. It's been sitting out here in the oil looking much better. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. How am I going to do this with one hand? I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, uh, oh, no. How am I going to do this? All right. There we go. All right, so let's take this off uh, so you guys get a better look at it. Nice dark. And looking pretty good so what's next so now we have to stone wash it so this is my little stone wash thing so i'm going to put this guy in here turn this on it'll be i want to do it for at least 15 minutes and then we'll come back take a look at it so once i click this on it's going to get loud so ready and then we say goodbye to that blade. All right, guys, so I don't even know how long it's been, but I'm going to say it's been about, you know, 15 minutes. So let's dig this thing out, see what it looks like. Uh, we might have to put it in longer, which is fine. And this is all just a... Uh, you know, like I like I say, I'm not a professional in any of this or expert. I'm just playing with it. I'm having fun. So straight out looks pretty good. Let's give that a good wiping off. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. That's on a future video. <laughs> um, I know you guys might be excited about the crow, but I'm working on that one, finishing it up. 
let's see, I'm holding the, the camera in one hand. What do you think? I kinda like it. I kinda like it. Ooh, yeah. That looks pretty, pretty good. So let me, hmm, I can't do this with you guys. So let me just wipe this thing down and then I'll come back and update you on what this looks like. All right, guys, so cleaned it up. What do you guys think? That kind of gives it that nice kind of rustic kind of look to it. Kind of like it. So awesome. Turned out pretty good. Um, I had the sheath done on this one. Um, so literally the only thing left is maybe do a little polishing on it and put an edge on it. And this guy is done. So I'm gonna have to take some pictures, send it over to the person that wants to buy this one or I'm making it for and see what they think. So that is the process. Um, let me go get the yoke dough. All right guys, so here we are. Naked column, stone washed, acid etched. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that process. Uh, it's a multi-step process and it takes time. And honestly, it's just a lot of sitting around and waiting. <coughs> and you never know how it's gonna really turn out until you pull it out of the etch and see what it looks like. Sometimes you have to do it two or three times and sometimes it works on the first. So it all depends how dark you're looking and what exactly you're looking for. So we got that one. The yoke toe got nice stone washed. I really like the evenness of that pattern, um, everything. So again, look, guys, this is just my process that I decided I wanted to share with you. I'm not a professional. Please make sure you're taking safety precautions as we're dealing with chemicals that are corrosive. Um, and you really need to take take and do some research and be careful with the things that you're doing. So anyway, I hope you liked. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment or not. Again, that choice is yours. Have a good one, guys.